Your Excellencies all, please permit me at the outset of this morning's SDG moment to extend yet again our deepest sympathy to the people of the United Kingdom and the Commonwealth on the passing of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. But as we speak this morning, in this moment, I ask us to ask ourselves who is needed on this journey. Heads of state, heads of government, yes. Ministers and ministries of finance, yes. But above all else, the individual citizens of this world. And that is why the United Nations has sought to ask us to remember the to-do list. Because in each of our lives every day, we make commitments about things that we must complete to make our lives better. And so we are asked today to do the same in this world, which is at a critical juncture in the affairs of man. We have seen, regrettably, a world that has reminded us that there is no right to life, that there is no right to success, that there is no right to ensuring that there can be prosperity. And regrettably, in seeing that, we have failed to lay the foundations that will allow us to continue to see the people who become the victims of hunger, to feel the people who become the victims of no education, to appreciate that a world that is driven by a climate crisis cannot provide a sustainable future for us. Are we so arrogant as to believe that there will be no failed societies and no extinct species? when the history shows us otherwise. I ask us this morning to let us speak to the citizens of the world. Let us speak to the citizens of the world, the boys and girls who we want in this battle. This battle to remind their leaders, to remind their parents, to remind their head teachers, to remind each other that they are necessary to join the army to fight against poverty. The first goal, end poverty. The second goal, to make sure that people can eat and that we end hunger. The third goal, to make sure that we can deliver good health for all. The fourth, to provide quality education so that people can think for themselves and lay a platform on which they can build for themselves. The fifth, to achieve gender equality so that whether it is a boy or a girl, or whatever gender you assume, that you have the right to live in this world without fear of discrimination and with opportunities equal to all others. And the staff of life, water, to ensure that there's water for all. How can that be something that the global community doesn't fight for. Or clean energy. Because we have seen just now in the video what an abundant reliance on fossil fuels and an industrial revolution has done for us. And yes, for people of color, we say that we are now the victims of double jeopardy because our blood, sweat and tears brought about the industrial revolution. And for too many of us now, we are on the front line of the climate crisis. And how do we get through when we speak to you as young people? We ask you to go for education. This assembly will speak today about the importance of transforming education so that you can be the best that you can be. But that is ultimately so that you can support yourself. Because freedom is about choice. And to have that choice, you need jobs. And that's what the to-do list at number eight tells us. To support also those jobs, we need sustainable infrastructure. And we need to be innovative in this world where technology is moving at the rapid rate at which it is moving. And in all these things, as His Excellency Emperor Haile Selassie stood here and said, we need to fight inequality.
If not, there shall be war. We need also to make sure that the environment within which we live, particularly in cities, when people come in their millions and their thousands and their hundreds to cities, that the cities can provide life for them because their actions and living is sustainable. And every day we use things. And you more than anyone else's children can lead the world in a waste-free world. In a world that recognizes that if we take the plastics and we take the things that we just use and throw away, that they have to go somewhere. But you, the children, can lead the revolution to change in our habits. And if you change those habits, then the to-do list of protecting the oceans and protecting life on land becomes a little easier. But we can't do that unless we also tackle the climate crisis. And those who must be on the front line must be those who expect to be living 10 years from now, 20 years from now, 30 years from now, 40 years from now, 50 years from now. My friends, and if we can do all of that, and if we can ensure fairness by ensuring that we can end conflict and we can end corruption, and we can tell the world that we don't want only to talk about the ending of conflict in the Ukraine, we want conflict ended in Tigray. We want conflict ended in Syria. We want conflict ended wherever it raises its head in the world. We want also conflict ended when it appears to be under the guise of criminality, like it is in Haiti. We want you, my friends, the children of this world, to hold us, the governments, accountable and to recognize that we do have choice and leaders can make decisions and leaders are not constrained in the decisions that we make and that everything does not depend on financing, although it is absolutely critical. And we will fight for financing, as I will speak later this week about, for the reform of the international financial architecture. But even without that, there are things that you and I can do. And we ask you, the children of this world, to hold our feet to the fire and make this world a better place to live in. Thank you.